we have a very definitive channel here, right? You got 30, you got, let's just call it 339, right? You got 339 to the downside in the queues, and you got roughly the... Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge master your process and own your future hey guys good evening everybody welcome to another edition of uh, the access of trade.com nightly wrap-up show hope everybody is uh doing well so if if you weren't an active participant in uh today's tape uh today's 600 point rally looks pretty damn good considering well we sold off 600 points yesterday in the dow we made it back today but if you traded today, if you're an active trader, uh, this was one of the, one of the wildest, if, if I can remember, one of the wildest sessions uh, in a very, very long time. Um, last night, we were looking for um, kind of a confirmation. My game plan for coming into today was looking for confirmation on a lot of names that closed at or uh, a little bit below uh, the five and the 10 day moving average. And the way uh, the market started, um, you know, we were getting that plan, right? The plan was was playing out a little bit. Um, you had some moves uh, coming in that direction. You saw a lot of weakness. And the one thing uh, that we knew was going to happen today was uh, the Powell testimony, right? Uh, but I didn't anticipate Powell. Usually, you know, you, you get a Fed day. You get a Fed day from 2 o'clock, right? Fed minutes, this, that, the other thing. I didn't realize this dude was going to literally be speaking for the whole day. I mean, I think he was getting paid uh, by the word today. And, you know, every single, no matter what he said, no matter, literally no matter what he said, the market was either going up or down, up or down, up or down, up or down. And, you know, it, the, the violence, right? That's the best way of saying it. The violence that, that we saw in the tape today was just out of control. And I, I was joking around that I, I posted um, uh, one of these GIFs or GIFs, whatever they're called, on uh, one of the, you remember the, the famous Matrix scene, right? When he's going on, on his back, that's what it felt like today. It felt like uh, every single trader was like in the Matrix, dodging bullets. If you were long, it was exciting. It was if you were short, it was exciting. And the one thing I, I've been saying for years: if your strategy, if your process, if your day is exciting, you're doing something wrong. Uh, trading is not supposed to be exciting. It's not supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be methodical. It's supposed to be boring and methodical and boring. Uh, equals predictable. And the one thing that we did not see today was predictable. And um, up and down, up and down, and up and down with every, uh, th with every, vo you know, with every word coming out of his mouth, you had a new uh, channel that was being compromised. And then you started seeing headlines coming from the whole uh, Ukraine-Russian affair. And, you know, then you started seeing that there was a headline that the delegation from the Ukraine supposedly were going to meet Russia for potentially some talks, the market like that as well. And then you started hearing the language of the Fed and he talk, started talking about uh, he would endorse a 25 basis point uh, move in March. Uh, and then slowly but surely the market started going higher. And that was kind of like, well, what happens next, right? And you know, what happens next scenario was playing out all day. And the most important part of what we saw today, the wildness, the aggressiveness, the action, the, the sexiness, right? The, uh, the, the violence, right? I think that's the best way of saying. Powell woke up today and um, he chose violence, right? He chose violence for the market. And all this is happening above the five day moving average and below the 20. Everybody see that guys? This is how tight we are. So imagine how much violence there has to be. And I saw a lot of trade, like I started like looking at social media today after uh, after four o'clock and a lot of people just, just having the same kind of, uh, it's kind of reaction. Well, what the hell happened today? Like, well, you know, where did, how could a tight channel day uh, in the queues, right? How could such a tight channel interval in the three days in the queues be so damn violent? And that's, well, hello, welcome to a, a war slash fed driven uh, fluid motion news uh, type of news cycle. And that's kind of where we are. And you have to make adjustments. Uh, it's very, very tough to, to, you know, to be in a position uh, and you just kind of just go outside and go to the park and just let your position play out. You're going to come back and you're going to be dumbfounded of how the hell did we get here? And that's kind of what we saw today. And as much as there was opportunity today, 
I really do believe that if Powell did not speak today or speak today the whole day, I do believe the, the game plan would have played out today. I, I, I really do believe so. We, we saw a just tremendous amounts of weakness this morning into an incredible amount of aggression this afternoon. So the question going into uh, tomorrow's session, well, which way do we break, right? And that's not, an, you know, that, that's not an answer um, I can give you. That's not an answer I think anybody can give you. If you look at the daily chart on the queues, we have a very definitive channel here, right? You got 30, you got, let's just call it 339, right? You got 339 to the downside in the queues, and you got roughly the 349, 350 area here on on onto the upside. Something has to give tomorrow, right? It, it really, you know, something really has to give. If not for tomorrow, maybe the next a couple of days, but something has to give here. And when you look at the activity today, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about um, uh, the individual pivots in, in, in a second. It's very very rare. I, I give you a perfect example. It's very very rare that if you're trading Tesla, you're probably going to be one-sided for the day, right? Because again, based on uh, based on uh, the daily chart, right, where it is in the spectrum. Today, just to give you an example, there was a pivot to the upside. Then the stock, for whatever reason, decided to sell off 40 points, created a pivot to the downside. Then towards the afternoon, it gave a pivot to the upside. There was a reload seller there, you know, a cup of coffee game, maybe two, three dollars before, you know, a couple of bucks, excuse me, a couple of bucks before it came back in and then it ripped into the end of the day. And now you turn around after the close and Tesla's down 10, right? And everything's down, selling off uh, after the close. And a day like this, you, you can really burn a lot of mental equity. And I want to kind of just kind of the point of Tesla, you know, usually if you get a move and it stops in one channel, usually holds the previous day as high or low. Yeah, you could see it trading both sides. But if Tesla is giving you a, a, a two or three different pivots throughout the day, and they're not correlated at all, it really shows you that the violence is real. It's it was upon us. It probably will stay here uh, within the next couple of days or so, until or maybe even the next couple of weeks or so. But the most important point is you have to adjust to it, right? You really do. You got to adjust to it. You got to figure out where's the safest course of action, and you got to take you know you got to take your flow when you get it. It's almost like to the point of. You can't sit there and wonder if your stock is going to come back. The probable chances of that is not. And that's kind of what we're seeing uh, over, over and over again. The good news is I kind of like what the market, what the bulls actually did today. And if, and if you look at where we closed, we actually put in a higher high in the last couple of days, although rejected off the 20 day moving average for now. Again, we could re reclaim it tomorrow while putting in a higher low from the five day moving average that they reclaimed yesterday on the close. So that on the surface looks pretty OK. But again, there's just so many variables right now moving around. It's so tough to get comfortable and it's so tough to prepare for a trading session one way because you know there's a good chance the downside or the upside is gonna come into fruition. So tomorrow, you know, I, I, I have some longs, I have some shorts that I like, you know, I'm gonna watch Tesla, right? I, I, I'm gonna watch it. Um, I like this 60 minute channel, it's getting tighter and tighter here. I'll keep an eye on it, right? But for every Tesla, you know, look at a Netflix. And again, we'll get to the pivots in a second, right? And look at a Netflix. You know, this thing is one day away, it hit a double bottom off uh, the, the the February 25th lows, you know, this thing is one day away and it never rallied from starting to test the lows here. For every UPST that looks, you know, really, really good, right? It's starting to set up, uh, you know, maybe needs a, a day or so to, to confirm back to the upside. You have a name like Rivian that, you know, couldn't get out of its own way. And now it's approaching a very macro channel. So you, you it, for, for tonight, you have to, in my opinion, again, uh, in, in my opinion, you have to create uh, an actionable trading plan for both sides of the market tomorrow. It is so unpredictable. It is so wild. It is so deranged right now that whatever you think could happen, it can happen, but it could happen later, cannot happen at all, or, or it could happen in the completely opposite case. So it's incredibly violent, incredibly exciting, and we don't want that. We want boring, lethargic, predictable. So we'll see what happens uh, with tomorrow's uh, session there as well. So let's talk about 
uh, today's day. Uh, there wasn't a lot, but the ones that went, they were, you know, they were pretty aggressive. Um, I'm still watching this Amberella. I had a really big move down uh, yesterday on earnings. Uh, dead cat bounce. It, it kind of reminds me of, do you guys remember the Roblox, right? The Roblox trade, right? So Roblox went down on earnings. The next day bounced a little bit. And then the following day got destroyed. Well, take a look at Amberella for tomorrow as well. Uh, a M B A, right? Look at Amberella. You have this big move down, had this little move up, right? I want to watch this thing for tomorrow. This thing confirms the pre the, the earnings lows. This thing's gonna get hit. So keep an eye on there. It didn't confirm obviously today. Uh, D W A C, nice pop, uh, two twenty two highs, and they had a some sort of um, some sort of uh, negative uh, hit piece on it later, but. Uh, the February 22 highs, 99 needs to confirm. Here was DWAC, right? Had the initial pop, right? Had the initial pop above 99, uh, went to about 102 and then reverse cores. Good job for all you guys who got it. Uh, you know, and this is kind of what, what we talked about, you know, the Fed kind of, you know, kind of killed the day. So here was, uh, you know, here was Amazon, 29.98 if it builds below can flush. It went down about 25 bucks, right? It went down about 25 bucks or so. And then you started seeing Fed, 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 up and down, 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 up and down. And ironically, you would figure the market would have such a strong day. Amazon would be up 50, 60 points. And here's my point, right? Only up 18 points. Again, market's demonstrating weakness demonstrating strength at the same time. But boy, oh boy, trying to figure out what could have been. Uh, Netflix got hit, never rallied today. That was the most important point. Uh, 382, 381, if it builds below, can flush. And this is my point. There was value on both sides of the market, despite some very, very aggressive notions. So here's the 382, 381 level. Uh, traded down to 375. That's me, the big line in the sand uh, going forward. Uh, Facebook never got the 202. Uh, Abercrombie and Fitch got hit pre-market. I don't think anybody got the 32 off. It went from 32 uh, all the way down to 29 before rebounding. I don't think anybody got this thing off. Um, Tesla was pretty good. Um, Tesla was pretty good both sides today. You had uh, the 875 break, although it was very, very thin. Uh, you had the 875 break, basically 880 second entry today. Uh, initially traded up to 886, came back in, and then here's kind of here was my notes. I go look. We're watching both the upside and the downside today. Here's the upside channel, 875 rejected three times. You know, went to like uh, 886, and then there was a pivot to the downside as well, uh, which was good. Here, nice spike in the morning. If 853 builds below, it can sell all the way down to 844. The initial 10-day moving average. And this one actually worked out pretty pretty well, right to the 10-day moving average. And look at the low of the day today, right? Uh, right to uh, 844. So the market's just all over the place. It really, it really, really is all over the place. Um, very, you know, if you're a small, if you're a newer trader, that's the best way of saying it. I think if you're a newer trader, you know, maybe you should, you know, sit and watch this for a couple of days uh, just to kind of see what's what. Because again, you need to to kind of train your mind to. To absorb this type of violence, to, to, to absorb this type of um, you know really aggressive moves, and sometimes because of your experience, and some of you guys have been trading a year, two, three years, your mind is not catching up to the speed to the action, uh, speed of the action, and a lot of times you're making a lot of emotional mistakes or emotional judgment plays based on what you think is going to happen instead of confirming. But guess what? In this type of environment, what we've seen now uh, for the last uh, you know like 12 hours or so, 24 hours. Even when it confirms, you have outside elements to kind of uh, disrupt the trade and kind of take it the other way. So crazy, crazy action. The one trade I messed up with on, on today, and this is kind of where I messed up. Um, there was a big buyer today, uh, came in for, I think it was the Ju June or July, uh, June or July, um, man, I don't even remember which one it was. Was it the 120s, 120 puts? So I shorted Roku opening range low off that 32 area, and it got down to like 131 and change. Now, why was that a problem? I forgot to look at the daily chart. 99.9%, .9 I look at the daily chart and I'll say, all right, let me, let, me, let me wait till it confirms that number. I didn't do so. So I shorted it. It only went down like 60, 70 cents. Uh, it started rallying back. I only lost like a dollar and change. It's not the point of the money. But here is the problem. If I would have just waited for the daily chart, right, to confirm, look what the damn thing did. 
All it went down was $7 without even an uptick. So guys, remember, as cool as your int intraday charts look, and they look great, and they look like they're about to go in that direction, remember, the ultimate, ultimate judge, jury, and executioner is the daily setup. Guys, God bless. Have a great night, and I'll see you all tomorrow.